Hello coaches, uh, this is Fernando from Ignite Global. Thank you very much for joining this uh, Ignite Credential Accelerate session. Today, what we intend to do here is to um, create a conversation by looking at a co actual coaching session uh, and then compare the competencies demonstrated with ICF current minimum uh, skill requirements. So that's what we are going to do and I'm hoping to create an interactive engagement. Great to see many of you are joining and we look forward to creating maximum value. And as all of you join, I would like to welcome uh, all of you. Thank you very much for being here. It's our time uh, for from around the world. So I really appreciate you being here. It shows your commitment to professional development. Right, and then secondly, I would also like to welcome Ritul uh, Shandilia, who is today going to be our coach and taken uh, this opportunity to um, demonstrate a coaching session with one of you. So if you, uh, thank you Mridul for joining us. We are excited to witness this coaching session. Yeah. And uh, I would also, like to quickly get to know all of you so what we could do is before we begin uh let's go go around the room quickly and uh, do a quick introduction you could mention your name where you're based in and let's say if you are a coach uh, what kind of uh, coaching do you provide uh, if you are not a coach uh, what kind of profession you are in if you feel comfortable uh, since we have a great number of you joining this session if you do the introduction for all of you it's going to take quite a, some quite some time so what i did was quickly created a small uh, breakout rooms let's introduce in small groups and then come back uh, in about six seven minutes that way we would be able to maximize this time and I hope uh, you don't mind that. I created these groups uh, randomly. We have about five minutes. Uh, let's do a one minute introduction in the room and then be back here. Have fun coaches. Okay, welcome uh, back. Coaches, I hope you had a great time introducing each other and also it was great uh, talking to uh, some of you. Okay, so then uh, without further ado, let's uh, begin the session. So I would quickly share with you the structure of this conversation today. So Ridul has agreed to be our coach and then uh, demonstrate a coaching session. So I would like to invite a coachee who would like to bring an actual topic to the table. Who would like to go? Time, yeah. Okay, so while uh, you're thinking about a coaching topic, let's invite Midul to introduce himself. Yeah, thank you, Fernando. So, uh, I, hi everyone. I am I'm a recent graduate here from Fernando's school itself. Uh, I completed PCMC end of April, and. Right now, I just have around 10-15 hours of coaching experience. Uh, so early on in my journey, still not an ACC. And uh, I thought uh, it will be uh, like so far, the experience has been uh, giving uh, coaching in a very, uh, like during the sessions with uh, Fernando and his group of mentors, uh, whatever practice uh, I have done as a coach has been in front of one mentor. So when I saw Fernando's mail, I thought it would be terrifying to present a coaching session in front of like a huge bunch of people. And that's why I thought, let's let's challenge myself. Let's see if, if I can do this or not. So uh, that is why I am here. Uh, so yeah, excited uh, to be here and hope to deliver some value out of this. And uh, uh, I see I see Peter also in the room. So, hi Peter, special hi to you. Uh, we have been coordinating recently on uh, some uh, aspects of business. So, yeah, good to see you here. Likewise. <laughs> Wonderful. Mridul, so I am very proud that you are taking this uh, challenge and challenging yourself. And it's very inspiring. And as a new coach, um, it will truly inspire all of us. So thank you for joining us uh, as the coach. So now we need a coachee. Uh, 
Okay, I'll come in for an endeavor. Okay. Even though as much as we're enjoying the silence. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful, Venka. Thank you so much for joining us as the coach. Would you like to introduce yourself? Um yep, I just completed my PCMC with Adelina in the month of May. I'm a Singaporean based in Singapore, but I chose to surprise my classmates and my coach by coming to Switzerland. and finishing up my PCMC course here. So at the moment I'm still in Switzerland. Um 60 hours done so far on my journey to complete the 100 hours with ICF. Wonderful one catch. Um it's really inspiring <laughs> to see two Ignite graduates coming forward uh to take part in this conversation. So exciting. And great. So then um how this session is going to um take place is uh, initially we will all put our microphones and cameras off uh, so that Mridul and Venkat can easily communicate uh, without any disturbances and then at the end when we come back we will hear from uh, coach e, uh, Venkat coach Mridul both what they thought about uh, how the session um, went and then we will create a few uh, minutes of uh, breakout rooms uh, in smaller groups and then you can discuss your observations uh, what you thought the coach did well and at the same time what you what you should do in other words and something differently during the coaching session uh, and then we will all come back and i will invite some of you to share those insights you generated during the uh, little breakout rooms and then if you uh, allow me the coach allows me coach he allows me i will also share some feedback with you specifically aligning them with the minimum skill requirements so uh, coaches once again thank you so much for being here and uh, very excited for this session mridul and venkat over to you mridul you have about maximum of 45 minutes let's aim for about a 40 minutes coaching session um also venkat when you choose the topic be a uh, bit mindful uh, to manage the time uh, within about 45 minutes right okay great so over to you have fun there is no right or wrong way of doing this and we are here to witness this great session go ahead mridul uh, over to you Hey Venkat. Hi Mitul. Yeah, great to have you here. How are you Thank doing today? You. I'm good. Looking forward for the session. Excited. Yeah. <laughs> Same here, excited. Uh likewise. So, yes Venkat, please tell me what would you like to explore today? Um something that's been bugging me for the past 2 days. It's re- about a project that I started Three or four months ago in Singapore, and I needed some volunteers to come in as my committee members. Mm-hmm. So I did shortlist a few of my ex students, and they were keen to come on board to support me. But later on, I found out they don't have the same wavelength or the the passion towards this particular project, right? So I'm finding difficulties in showing them the door. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. So I brought them yeah. in as a committee member to take the initiative to be as leaders also. But you know, I am managing everything still. So I'm still I've given them a lot of options, chances, but I need to start getting in more committee members. That's what I feel and at the same time, I'm not sure whether should I let them go or still keep them. So my project needs to go on. Mm-hmm. So you get the picture. yeah so what i hear from you is that uh, for your project you have formed a committee and uh, these are some of the members you included in your committee mm-hmm. now you are not very satisfied uh, with the outcome they have provided and you think it's better to find new people uh, to bring in community while while at the same time uh, in your words like you said show show the door to the people who you brought in earlier right <laughs> and uh and <clears throat> you're not sure whether uh, uh it's the right thing to do or how you want to do it yeah should uh, yeah you're right yeah okay and <clears throat> uh, uh may i ask why is this uh, 
an important thing to discuss uh, today? Um, yes, I'm, I just need some clarity. Um, I'm not sure what to do. See, I, the, the heart is talking to me, my brain, my mind is talking to me, so, but I need to make a decision. Okay, okay. And uh, what is the time frame you are looking for uh, to make this decision? At least by end of this month, middle. Now it's the beginning okay. of July, so end of this month, good time, yeah. Okay, got it. So, uh, then uh, what could be uh, the outcome you would like to take, Venkat, by the end of our discussion today? That, you know, um, I mean, it's a very good question. Thank you. Either to keep them and bring in more people or to remove them and bring in more people. So A or B. So that, if I can get clarity on that, it would be good. Okay, that's that's pretty clear in itself, Venkat. So you have two options in mind and uh, mm. you want to figure out uh, whether... So bringing people is something you, it seems you have already decided because both options uh, include bringing people. Yes. Uh, you got now that right. You want, <clears throat> yeah, now you want to evaluate whether you should keep the ones who were already there or you don't want to keep the ones. I think that's that's a either or kind of a decision you are currently in. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I like the way you've analyzed it. Good. Yes, you're right. Okay. Um, the, the choice of bringing in new people is confirmed. Yes. Okay, great. So then let's begin to look into this uh, situation, Venkat. What's What's the most important thing to discuss in the overall scenario here? <clears throat> as much as I'm a very project-oriented person, I'm also a people person. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that is where the conflict is arising now. Arising now. So these people who came in on board to volunteer to help me out with this project, and uh, I thank and I appreciate that. But asking them, telling them, guys, you're not performing at all. I'm doing all the work. Ask, giving them the boot. How is I feel using my heart, it's not right. And then mm -hmm. my head tells me that having too many committee members also is not right. Mm -hmm. All right. What would you do if you were in my position? Any advice? <laughs> so I've never been in your position. <laughs> so uh, there is no way I can advise you on this. But yeah, I can definitely help you reflect further on this as, okay. as to what can be done. Now, you're saying uh, it's, it's a choice uh, between head and heart. Mm. Right. Uh, what makes you say that? I tend to give a lot of chances. Right, for to see results, to see improvement. Um, but then again, I should lean towards being a task oriented person, also. You see, mm -hmm. and I'm in a stage where I'm, I'm, I'm floating too much of uh, balancing too much of balloons now. That's why I brought in these people to take away one of the balloons. I've got lesser balloons to keep it afloat, but I'm drowning here. Mm -hmm. So, what should I'm not sure what to do next, you know. Okay, so given that you are drowning, mm. uh, what's the best course of action to prevent you from drowning? Take up swimming lessons. No, just kidding. Um, <laughs> I mean, the, the show is going on. The project is still going on. Just that I'm tired of doing everything by myself. Even though I've delegated, uh, I do not see the commitment from them. And I have voiced out. Mm -hmm. All right, but because it's my baby project, I don't mind getting drowned. Mm -hmm. But what's the point? I already have these people, you know. Okay. 
Okay. So you're saying you have voiced out your concerns, uh, mm. but still, uh, it's it's a difficult situation, and uh, you are finding it difficult to stay afloat. Mm. Right. Uh, what makes you think that uh, whatever you have voiced out uh, has been heard? Um, yeah, because it was private messages to them and not in the group chat. So it was a conversation going on between me and the individual people concerned. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I have reached out to them, told them this is what I'm expecting. This is, you know, you're underperforming and all that. Let me know if you have any issues. Let me know if you want to back off. Oh, no, sir. I'll be part of it. I'm sorry. And it goes back to the square one. Okay. Okay. So square one and uh, the, the, the situation that you currently describe uh, seems like you have tried a lot already. Mm. Yeah. And been patient also. Yes. Okay. Hmm. Uh, what else have you seen from the situation here? <laughs> I mean, to be honest, I don't need them. I'm doing everything. When it's 3 a.m. In the, in the morning, what I'm still doing it, you see? I don't need followers. I want leaders, which I've already told them. Mm-hmm. So I don't really feel that, oh, I made the wrong choice. You know, I still want to give them a chance, but you know, I'm getting, it's quite taxing. Mm -hmm. mm. So uh, given that you don't need them, uh, what stops you from uh, moving them out? My heart. <laughs> As I said, I'm very <laughs> soft-hearted, right? I mean, these guys came forward. They are supposed to be the pioneers, my pillars, and all that. Uh, so you know, you know, the, the devil and the angel and the head is talking. You know, so where should I lean now? Should I just tell them, okay, guys, sorry, you got to leave, or no, thank you? I don't know. That's why I want, I want some kind of direction in this session. Hmm. Hmm. Okay, it seems to me uh, that you are concerned about what would happen next. Uh, after you let them go. And that's why uh, you, you are concerned about uh, like, like your heart not allowing uh, you this action. I wouldn't really say that. I wouldn't really say that I'm concerned about after I let them go. Should I let them go? I'll keep them. That's what I am discussing with you about. Okay. Mm. So, uh, what I've heard from you so far, Venkat, is uh, you brought them for XYZ reasons. Mm. Uh, they haven't performed up to what you expected them. Mm. Uh, you have provided the necessary feedback. Yes. They have heard all of it. Uh, and you still seem to be doing all the heavy lifting. Mm, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, and your head says that uh, it's okay to let them go. Uh, so we have all of this uh, combined together pointing towards one direction. Whereas there is one elephant in the room, uh, I would say, which is your heart, uh, which says that don't do it. Yes. Yes, we do. <laughs> right. So uh, I'm wondering... Uh, what is what is making the heart so worried about it? <clears throat> I 
I'm, I'm grateful. I'm you no know, gratitude. I'm grateful that these guys came in and I wanted to launch this outreach program. So maybe that's what it is. I'm very grateful for them. So I don't want them to leave or me kicking them out. Okay. So should I have another heart to heart talk with them as a group, as in one to one? I'm not sure. Should I just close the doors on them? You know, hey, enough is enough. I'm already a white beard already. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Hmm. And uh, have you defined in your head as to hmm. what is enough here, Venkat? What is? Enough. So when you say enough is enough, uh, what is enough for you? The third straw. So after that, sorry, strike three, you're out. So most of them strike three already but I'm still keeping them. So that is my, that's why I'm in the stage now where I've got to decide. Mm -hmm. I give the first chance, give the second chance, third chance, still under performance. And this is kind of an international event also. So I don't want my name to be get tarnished. Not that it's all about me here. It's not. But, you know, my effort and all that. So their lack of responsibility of underperformance reflects on me as the leader of the whole program. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you see where I'm coming from? So when yes. you ask me what is enough, yep, this is enough. I have to take some actions now. Okay. Hmm. Okay. So uh, again, when I uh, hear you, it, it almost looks like uh, you are on the doorstep of that action. Mm. And, and the action the action is right there in front of you. Just You just need to open the door. Hmm. Uh, <laughs> so uh, what will what is it that will help you open the door peacefully right now Venkat you mean to say open the door to let them in again is that what you're trying to imply that means no, have another, give them more chances no I mean to say that uh, on the other side of the door is uh, your project without these people. So you are in a room with these people. Uh, you have got to a door where you are ready to walk out without these people. Mm. Uh, you you are all. It almost seems that you have driven yourself to the door because uh, you have given them repeated feedback and chances. Now, mm. but but you're not yet. You have not yet opened the door to move out from there. Uh, what will ease this movement and cut so maybe if I can discuss with you the pros and cons of exiting the door going on the other side and the pros and cons if I'm on still on this side that would really be helpful sure uh, what's, uh, what would you like to discuss in that Um, um, <clears throat> because as I said earlier on, I'm, I'm using a lot of times you know, using my heart and at times mm -hmm. using my head. So if I, with, the, with your help, with your assistance, if I can just firm things up and make a decision of the look at the pros and cons, mm -hmm. it would be very helpful for me. Okay. Mm. So would you like to list or mention the pros and cons which are there in your head right now? Write it down. Uh, just speak it out, whatever feels convenient. <laughs> Pros of having them. Thanks for this question because, you know, even though it's always been in my head for the past few weeks and last two days, I told myself to make a decision quick. I never really, really sat down to write down or think about the pros. Now that you're asking mm -hmm. me this question, I've got to take some time. What's the pros? I'm, they're good listeners. They're good for, I mean, they're good followers. Mm -hmm. so I'm, not, I'm not sure whether that's a pros or a con. I don't want followers. <laughs> I want leaders. And these students are my leadership students. 
you know, they're not applying whatever they've learned. So I'll take it as positive. Yeah, they have whatever instructions I give, they follow, they, they carry it out. Mm-hmm. That way, it's a plus point. Yeah. Okay. The, cons, the cons, I would say, Midol, is that um, I don't have enough time in a day to manage this project. That's why I brought them in and I'm still doing it. Mm-hmm. I would love to find, yeah, I mean, let's stick with the cons first, yeah. They are not coming forward, no initiative, uh, no ideas, no firefighting skills, or I'm not sure that they want to get involved, you see. Lack of involvement. That's a cons of keeping them. Mm-hmm. Now, if I walk to the other side of the door without them, um, the pros is there isn't a second party I have to communicate to get things done. I can just do it with myself because I'm also doing it myself now. Mm-hmm. It's my baby. It's my project. If I fall, I fall. You see? Actually, this, yeah, the pros is there. The cons is um, I always love to seek feedback. As much as I'm a leader, I believe in seeking feedback every time. So whenever I want okay. to do something, I always get them their views. What's your input? So I like to brainstorm, brainstorm, brainstorm. And mm-hmm. so if I don't have them, this is what I'll be lacking. Ideas from them or their inputs and all that. So there is a con there also. So that's why I said I need to bring in more new people. Okay. What else? Good, Midun. You're going to be thinking. And, you know, what I would say is I think I would like to have one more last meeting with them. And share with them that I'm drowning. And that's why you're not here for. So, yeah, I think I should have one more meeting with them. Share what's happening. Give them a choice to stay and also to, or to leave. So let them make the decision, not me. Okay. That's interesting. Hmm. How is this conversation going to be different from what you have done previously? By myself in my head? Is that what you meant? No, no. So uh, previously I meant when, when you met uh, these people previously. Right. Uh, and when you have had discussions previously uh, mm. about this project and their performance and you want to have another meeting. How is this conversation going to be different from what you have spoken with them previously? Early on, I would feel it was more like, hey guys, you know, on a very soft uh, approach. Okay. Now that the, the things is running, you know, even tomorrow I have a talk show going on. From someone from UK is coming. You know, so the show is already on. It's going on. We have a lot of public and members joining our Facebook group. So now I think I got to be more firm. And if they are here just for limelight and, you know, be part of the action, but don't want to do any involvement, then I'm sorry. So I got to be more firm in the next meeting we do. And not take the soft approach. Okay. So what I hear from you is that uh, so far it has been mostly... uh, a feedback in in a very friendly and soft term mm. uh, and you don't want to straight away shock them by uh, sending them out uh, <laughs> you want to have them uh, meeting have a meeting with uh, yeah. your yeah. people where yeah. you kind of uh, hold the mirror in front of them saying that uh, uh, this is what the reality is right now and uh, you want this to be a more firm conversation. Absolutely. Now, because this is a non-profit organization, I need volunteers. Maybe that's why I've been very soft. 
and mm -hmm. maybe they, they took advantage of my kindness also. But they know who Venkat is because for six months I was teaching them leadership topics. They know I'm a very stern, firm person in class. <laughs> uh, but maybe now they are more on a friendly, you know, uh, manner with me now. So I got to tell them, guys, this is a project. Seriousness is there. So I will take this firm approach, Mido. Yeah, that's what I should do. Okay. And when would you like when, to do this? No, so, you're sorry, you were saying something. Yeah. No, what do you think? Should I do this? Uh, why not? Please go ahead. Okay. <laughs> if, uh, okay. if, if this is... <laughs> If this is something that uh, uh, you think is a logical next step, then please go ahead. Yeah, I feel good. I feel good about this approach. Yeah, this or this action that I wanted, I want to take. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so you're coming to your question. When do you think I'll do this? Um, I think over this weekend, because tomorrow we got an event, and then this weekend mm -hmm. I can do a post mortem, talk about the event, and also tell them, you know. That I nearly drowned. And guys, you got to really come in. And what's your issues? Why aren't you like performing? You know, talk to me and all that kind of, that approach. But I gotta be firm. That's the key word here. Okay. Uh, that's that's good awareness from you, Venkat, about the situation and how you have identified that uh, you need to transition from uh, someone who has been soft so far to someone who needs to be more firm to them. Yep. Uh, and uh, given that you have decided on your next course of action, uh, how, how do you see uh, this playing out, Venkat, over, over the long run, say, after the conversation and you see, you know, I think they will know that I'm serious about this. And I like that. I like that idea of having the Saturday meeting. I like the idea that they want to know, they should know that I'm serious about this. You know, um, sorry, what's your question again? <laughs> so how, how do you see this playing out? Uh, say, uh, I'm, I'm trying to help you visualize uh, Mm. What happens after you have conducted this meeting and been firm with them? What happens next? Uh, yeah. Okay. So as I said, I feel I already feel good. I really feel good. I think this was pending. Okay. And number two, the seriousness of this, they should know it. And I'm also going to let them know that the show is still going to go on with or without you. Right? So... Mm -hmm. Yeah, I feel, I feel good. It's very positive, you know. I, I don't think or focus too much about them. I should focus about the project more. Okay. And yeah, yeah. So I don't want them, I should let them know. I don't slow me down. Yeah, I feel good. I feel good. Very positive. Okay. And the, how, how is your heart feeling now? We, we had identified the elephant in the room earlier how, how is the heart feeling now is it how heart is good heart is always good and big now i feel good i feel good just that you know as i was telling you i always had this conversation from my head the devil and angel always talking this kind of firm things up which is good contemplating always so now but yeah thanks thanks for this session in perspective your project is important or these people is important you know so yeah i will have this discussion with them this coming saturday you do okay yeah. and uh, if i have to ask you one last thing as to what what value you added uh, for yourself as part of this session today what would you say at times, be people-oriented. At times, be task-oriented, Lincoln. <laughs> yeah, don't always be people-oriented. Okay, that's, that's, that's very 
it's very crisply put i must say <laughs> like <laughs> yeah very yeah, to I the should. point and very yeah i should write it on my wall also a reminder for myself <laughs> sure so uh, i i just summarize uh, whatever we have discussed so uh, we, we began the session uh, with the problem statement or the task that you had on your mind that uh, you have hired some people as part of your project and uh, those pe- those folks had been hired mostly to take the burden off you but uh, uh you have found yourself drowning uh, still uh, in the work that you have been doing mm. and you discussed during the session that despite the fact that you have given them enough feedback uh, mm. they haven't improved up to the level where you expect them to uh, during the session uh, what we figured out uh, was the awareness on the aspect that uh, the discussions so far have been more on a softer side uh, and a more friendly feedback and you would like to become more firm with them as as to like one final kind of a discussion uh, on improve or leave uh, kind of a discussion and uh, let and then go on to see uh, what happens next and uh, i hear from you you would like to do this uh, discussion on the coming saturday itself so yep uh, that's that's great venkat uh, any anything else you would like to add before we close no yeah, i'm good and i love the way you summarize everything thank you thank you venkat thank you for your time excuse me sorry thank you thank you mido excellent rajul and uh, great event to see that uh, the thought process evolving uh, let me quickly check in with uh, rajul and venkat would you like a few minutes break i'm good i'm good thank you i'm good okay wonderful uh, coaches who are joining us if you would like to take a quick break uh, feel free to do so i think we can continue this conversation uh, it was very uh, interesting to see the shifts uh, the interesting questions the energy exchanges uh, well done uh, to both of you so before we continue to uh, hear out what our coaches here watching us uh, think let's hear first from uh, coachy what did you think uh, when cut of the session what did ridul do well uh, what you may have done differently okay um I love the way he summarized it. He's got excellent memory. He remembered everything. So what he did at the end, giving back to me, make it this how he started the mid and the ending was too good. Was too good. I, I myself was quite impressed. I wouldn't have done that well. Um, in the beginning, I like the way he started with, you know, he repeated whatever he said. Okay, what I heard and the, those kind of words he used. Question: Am I right to say that? You know, and then he asked for time frame. But during that period, I also noticed there was. i contact lacking a bit in the beginning so that's what i noticed um so i was as a coachy i was like hey, how come he's not looking at me so the the beginning part was cru- crucial for me for the to have the connection um he i i like this word when he used doorstep that was a shifting point for me actually Kevin could you on the door step in and out there. so that gave me a good picture to start thinking and analyzing that is where he brought me really into the coaching session so that was quite good you know I really like that so yeah that's what i have to share fernando uh thank you venkat uh, valuable feedback uh mridul what do you think about venkat's ideas and also what are your own thoughts about how you conducted this session so yeah thanks venkat for the session and thanks for the feedback uh, really appreciate uh, <clears throat> the feedback that you given uh, yeah i uh, i think venkat found the path for himself i think that is uh, that's that's what uh, i it it appeared seamless 
for me in the way he found the path for himself he was able to reflect more on uh, what is happening uh, with his state of mind uh, and his uh, he, he he was not uh, talking about uh, being soft and from earlier uh, which came out during the session which i felt uh, was good awareness uh, that came out from him uh, as part of the session uh, as a coach uh, uh, for me i found that uh, uh, i was i was focused on what are the steps i should take on a one by one basis uh, like to do this after this after this um i wanted to i thought the heart part was important uh because that kind of uh, was telling something about wanker the person to me uh and uh, uh maybe i missed a chance there uh there there was a possibility to discuss more on that uh, over a longer term uh, aspect rather than just address this particular situation uh, so i felt i could have managed that better but uh, I, overall i am happy that he was able to come up with certain next steps uh, out of this session and at least we got an outcome uh, which is which looked like a fairly positive thing to me great jiro thank you very much uh, great awareness uh, of your own performance so brilliant uh, okay uh, coaches now i would like to invite all of you so i think it's a time that we actually now can collaborate so what i have done is uh, put you together into the same rooms Uh, as before and then in this uh, little groups we will spend 8 uh, minutes discussing um, what you thought the coach did well and at the same time what things you may have done differently uh, so that's what we will discuss about in these groups and i will open the breakout rooms right now have fun and see you in about 7 8 minutes Okay, welcome back coaches. I hope you had uh, great collaborations with your colleagues. Now let's hear from uh, three groups. Uh, how was the conversation and what stood out to you uh, from your little group discussions? Who would like to share? I invite three groups to share uh, maybe one or two points each. Maybe uh, group 3 if uh, ilham patrick alexander and alexandros and others if any one of you want to add in please add in uh, i think what we discussed about this fernando is that while mithul is quite early in his uh, coaching hours long uh, he said 10 to 15 i think a lot of things we found that uh, he did well uh, coming from a perspective that he's quite early in his uh, uh, i'm about 400 hours so you know i feel i can i can just add a few pointers to him uh, maybe uh, middle what went well for you and it is not about the fact that is the forum where we are just trying to share what went well and what could have been improved what really went well is that you were very well on listening and presence uh, maybe you could evoke more awareness if you had uh, certain better questions but uh, really commendable that you had uh you had very good presence throughout the conversation very good listening throughout the conversation uh in terms of asking questions uh, maybe a few times there were closed ended questions uh, maybe you could look at open ended questions also uh, uh you know uh, sometimes the client's words you may not need to paraphrase fully you can take a phrase or a word and then explore that uh also maybe look at uh, you know it looked like you had a script in mind but when you are 10 to 15 hours uh, again you did a very good job because your script was quite in in line with the questions you were asking so uh, overall i think you did a very good job uh, just please remember that when you ask about the outcome rather than saying the outcome say what was the outcome that was discussed in the beginning so that looks like you are actually hearing what the outcome is 
and uh, that's these are just some contributions we are making i mean uh, and i could be completely wrong in what i'm saying but uh, that is what uh, some of the things discussed uh, patrick alexandro zilam and uh, others if you want to add please add from group 3 yeah i think one person from uh, one group would be good thank you very much anurag yeah. for sharing and let's hear from another group as well let's uh, just share one point that stood out to you during your conversation for me what stood out well was uh, you know when twice during the conversation he tried asking solutions can you help me uh, what if you are in my shoes immediately he turned the focus back on no i have not been in your shoes but i'll help you facilitate your action steps uh, so and twice uh, venkat did stop to ask solutions from him directly so that was well handled i like that uh, yeah and the simplicity the flow was quite uh, uh, good in the conversation uh, perhaps a little more exploration on the values the energy shift and the emotions like when it started the conversation it has been bugging me i'm feeling like drowning um uh, i should be a good swimmer uh, i feel tired so perhaps exploration on the emotions the energy shifts a bit more and using the clans analogies he added brilliant analogies which worked very well for venkat but perhaps using the clans analogy like what what could this perhaps it could have uh, so using the clans um, uh, this thing and what he did again very well was he partnered with the clan playing back the clans all his express possibilities for the clan to choose from the action steps uh, this thing and summary was brilliant thank you sonali um thank you for sharing um, and representing the group now let's hear from one more group one last group mando i can uh, so our group had a question uh, mm -hmm. and and so uh, so florence and i were discussing uh, whether uh, the summary that uh, i provided towards the end Uh, whether it's a good idea to ask the client to summarize the session, or should the coach do it for the client towards the very end? What would your uh, suggestion on this be? What was the outcome that was created for that question, Rijul, in the in the room? Sorry, I, I did not get you. What uh, what, what was you the what was your conversation? What were you more towards in this question? oh what, like what what would i prefer to do uh, yeah mhm mm uh i would like to summarize myself as a coach uh if i have heard the client uh, decide some actions and accountability then eventually towards the end i would like to summarize myself as a coach uh, uh the feedback uh, Uh, which came was that uh, sometimes it can be a good idea to let the client summarize as well and uh, that's where uh, i think yeah it's it's a topic worth checking with you as like what what should we keep in mind as to when we should summarize as coaches or when we should let the client summarize okay now when you said that i would like to summarize as a coach the energy there is quite solid what is that energy bridgel mm. i think it is difficult for a client to remember each and everything so uh asking the client to summarize after everything has been decided mm -hmm. uh could could lead the client to a situation oh more work for me uh when i have already decided on my actions and what i am going to do why is the coach asking this to me now so that is the reason why i think i would like to summarize uh towards the end once i have heard everything what the client wants to do and by what time frame he or she wants to do i think possibly that that is why then my energy is drifting more towards uh, that the coach can summarize in the end okay so now as we are exploring those thoughts 
if you were to do something differently than what you did before, is there anything else? Yeah. <clears throat> About the summary? Yeah. I think after I summarized, uh, and I don't remember the exact flow of what happened now, after I summarized, I... I asked that anything you would like to add, Venkat, uh, before we move towards the close. So that was me giving him a chance uh, to correct me uh, if there was something wrong or there is a different interpretation that I put out uh, of the overall session. Uh, and if I had to do something different, I could have put it more clearly that correct me if I summarized it, uh, if there is something incorrect in my summary or something that we missed. Okay, excellent, Rajul. So uh, you would invite the client to confirm that uh, the summary you provided is what the client intend to do as well or what the client shared. Great, so now, uh, now that we explored that area a little bit, let me answer the question directly what you asked. So who should do the summary, the coach or the coachee? The answer re really is there's no right or wrong way of doing it, right? So what could be done truly there is for the coach to uh, look at your own energy, intuition and consider there what would be most value for the client here? So checking in with your own self and then go with that intuition, whether you would do that or whether you'll in, invite the client to do it. Now, something that you yourself said, Mridul, during the exploration is that um, the one of the reasons why you, two, two of the reasons, one, the client might feel like you're repeating the same question. The secondly, um, the client might not be able to remember everything that happened. I think in the second situation, we have an opportunity where if we invited the client to share, we can carefully listen to the client and see how many things the client truly remembers. Now, you as the coach, you also have a list of things that you would like to summarize. And then if you summarize what is missing, there is truly co-creation there now. You can say, great. So these were the points you shared, three points. I remember you sharing this other two points as well. What are your thoughts? Just like you said, checking in with the client. So when that happens, you truly co-create. And then there's an opportunity for you to show the client that you are truly very present to the conversation. You were able to even grasp certain things the client missed out. So when that happens, client feels that trust built immediately, rapport built immediately. So, right. So let's summarize. There's no right or wrong way of doing. Check in with your intuition and be present to the moment and create the maximum value for the client. I hope that question is, uh, yeah. Okay, great, Mridul. So let us now, to be fair, let us uh, ask uh, Mridul. Now you heard some feedback coming from our coaches collaborating here. Uh, anything that you would like to add um, to those feedback that you heard already? Yeah, I, uh, later I, I also realized one more thing that, uh, and thanks again, uh, Florence, for pointing this out, uh, that the, the goal that we initially decided, uh, we, we, it was either to uh, say, let them go or not, uh, let them go. Uh, we kind of ended somewhere in between. Uh, by the end of the session. So there was also an opportunity to me to bring in a checkpoint that uh, we are uh, ending with, we are, we are getting to a point where we are ending somewhere in between uh, is, so there is a shift from what we initially took as, as a goal of the session. Uh, that is something which I needed to bring to the client's attention. Uh, that that needed that also needed to be one of the stages of the session, and yeah. Otherwise, uh, whatever feedback I've heard from the folks here, uh, that is all very valid and very valuable for me. So, <laughs> thanks, thanks Anurag, thanks Sonali for uh, sharing that feedback. Great, 
Thank you, uh, Mridul. Now, would you like some feedback from uh, this side from me, uh, especially comparing them with uh, competency? Would you like that? Sure, Panandu. That's what we are here for. <laughs> okay, brilliant. So usually when I provide feedback, I prefer to uh, first address the most important developmental opportunities. So when we look at ICF coaching recordings coaches, uh, we look at strengths of the coach and then the developmental opportunities for the client. Now, we need to remember when we say developmental opportunities, there's a difference between what I have done differently compared to not meeting a marker or a minimum skill requirement. So we should not mix that and we keep that in mind. So I would like to begin with few developmental opportunities, Midul. Let's begin with this question. What are your thoughts about how you demonstrated accountability and support for the client? Yeah, so for accountability, uh, I could not ask a very crisp question towards the end uh, to set an accountability or support mechanism. The the best question I could ask there was, when would you like to do it? That was me trying to bring some accountability for the client. Uh, that uh, it's it's clear in client's head that uh, the client is defining in his head that he will do it on so and so date, and kind of anchors his thought that action X needs to be done on this date or within this time frame. And that anchoring brings out the accountability, uh, but it's it's a it's a soft way of creating a accountability. There could have been better ways of creating accountability for the client. Uh, wonderful, Rachel. I'm glad that we are realizing now that accountability could have been a more crisp question, as you said. Uh, it is true. Now, um, if you ask me, Rajul, uh, would this pass as an ACC recording, considering you are a new coach? Uh, would this pass as an ACC recording? I would say it's on the fence because of the accountability reason to begin with, truly. Uh, now, when you explained how you perceived accountability, it makes sense to us. It, it's truly correct. At the same time, was it really clear to the assessor? Did assessor also hear the same thing, right? So we do not know. An assessor might think, oh yeah, this is accountability. I understand you exactly how you perceived it might also not, right? Accountability is one of the key components that ICF uh, competencies focus on assessing coaching recordings. So mentioning it as a very clear question, like you said, crisp question is very important. Now to add value to all the coaches who are here, uh, who are working towards ACC, PCC and MCC, let me share with you the paradigms of how to truly use uh, accountability in your coaching sessions. Now for the ACC, if you directly ask the client after the actions are created, how would you uh, like to create accountability for yourself today or um, support mechanism around this today? So if you just ask this question in ACC recording, you get the passing grade. It doesn't even really matter what the client may have to say. Now at the MCC level, you need to ask the question in a way, uh, it's not just one dimensional. Now, when you ask what accountability would you like to set for yourself? If the client said, I would like to um, ask my assistant to support me, right? And ICF would recognize this good for ACC. However, for MCC, it would be, uh, sorry, PCC, it would be considered as one dimensional. So at PCC level, it is important that we further probe with the question, uh, several, uh, maybe two, three questions around accountability. Uh, keeping in mind that we are creating a support system for the client longer term. It's not just about the client setting up an alarm or someone just supporting them, but helping the client to realize that they are creating a support system in the long run. So this is what we keep in mind in the PCC. So at least two questions are important. So for an example, if the client said, I would like to set up a to-do list, great. Now, what's, what's beyond that? What does accountability truly means to you? So deepening their awareness about accountability a little bit more. Here comes the coaching mindset. So what you're doing is enabling the client to develop a coaching mindset when you do that. Now, that is what happens in the PCs recordings. Now, this becomes a little bit tricky 
when it comes to MCC. Now in MCC, you might not even directly use the word accountability and ask the question. You could even find through the client's own sharing what accountability the client is really creating. And then even pointing it out to the client and say, so by doing this, I hear that you are creating a support system around you, some sort of accountability around you. What do you think about that thought I have at the moment? So finding accountability in what the client is sharing and then bringing that into life with words so that it becomes very clear to the assessor. So that is one way MCC uh, could uh, create accountability. Another way would be if the client actually did not mention accountability directly to ask the question. Asking a question here would be as, as openly as possible. For an example, if I mention now that you have explored all these things, a short summary, and you can say at this point of time, if I mention the word accountability, what comes up for you? And then now there's a another level to MCC, which is you, you need to assess now with your intuition, is this accountability client is sharing with me is solid. So you make that judgment. If not, you probe further. So you also need to demonstrate trust for clients own work in MCC. So PCC, it's not very important that we have to demonstrate trust for the client's work in accountability, but at MCC level, it is necessary. Another one, um, Ridul, you did explore emotions, which came up. Uh, you did talk about heart. That was great. Apart from that, um, what is your thought about using emotions, energy shifts, tonalities, or the somatic awareness of the client in the session? What opportunities do you see? Um, I, like I consider it as a as an overall area of improvement for myself not just within the session. Uh, if I have to pick one thing as my biggest area of improvement so far from what I've learned in my first 10, 15 hours is it is on catching emotions in, a, in, in, in the right way and utilizing those emotions, putting it back in front of clients. Uh, and uh, Knowing that uh, that I, I intentionally tried to go there uh, towards summarizing on what the head is saying and what uh, the heart is saying. Uh, but then uh, I think I was a little skeptical in diving too deep into that. Uh, as much as the client was skeptical, I as a coach also, I was skeptical. So we were both skeptical. I, I felt we were both a bit uh, nervous about that discussion and hence uh, we both retreated to our safe spaces uh, that uh, and hence uh, there was an opportunity lost. I think that that is that's my takeaway that there was an opportunity lost there. Uh, wonderful awareness, Ritual. I appreciate your own um uh, ability to see what is going on with you. In fact, I wrote the word vulnerable here uh, just as you got to that. So when we talk about creating a somatic awareness in our clients, especially talking about energy shifts, um, as well as uh, questioning about their emotions, inquiring about their emotions or um, feelings could be quite challenging sometimes. Um, now, often when we talk about uh, normal conversations, day-to-day -day conversations, we do not necessarily tap into this kind of energy shifts in people. Now, what we need to remember is that when we talk about coaching, it is an induced environment. It's an environment for the client's development. So talking about emotions, um, energy shifts, tonality differences, general uh, somatic awareness is extremely important. Um, now, what we need to remember is that in order for us to do that, we need to become vulnerable. When we ask questions like that, we are not sure what kind of answers we would receive. So that is what the, that is. That could be one of the challenges uh, on top of the awareness that you have. Actually, you need to participate more in this uh, area. Um, right. So when we talk about vulnerability, then we know that vulnerability is an MCC level skill. Uh, in why? coach being able to be vulnerable and invite the client to be in a 
vulnerable stage. So middle grade awareness that you see where you can develop. And then middle, the next thing I would like to check in with you, since it also came up earlier about the summary. Now you did several summaries during this conversation. Um, I would say like the last summary was great. And then there was also at the uh, somewhere two third of the session uh, that there was a great summary that you were doing. And also on in between the set sharing, there were several summaries, which I might, I as an observer, I thought it was a bit wordy there and there it was quite frequent. What is your thought about uh, your ability to provide uh, summaries? I think it's a decoy uh, for me to give myself time to think. Uh, <laughs> so uh, I, I Sometimes I'm summarizing for the client and sometimes I'm summarizing because I need time to think on what I need to do next. So uh, as, as I develop more uh, and figure out what question I should ask next, uh, I intend to reduce the number of summaries I provide during the session. We don't need so many summaries. Uh, summaries at critical junctures would do. Excellent, Madhu. Great awareness once again. So what I would then recommend is there, uh, the technique you're using is great. The technique to summarize that buys you time is great. That means you're showing that you were present during the client's sharing. You were not processing during that time. So I commend you for that ability and also your awareness and the technique to use that time while summarizing. What I would say, which also came up is that um, Rijul, as you become more experienced in the coaching journey, to be more comfortable being silent there and allowing the client to take that time, allowing yourself also permission to process that. Now, one of the tips I could share with you, how you could uh, approach this more safely for yourself or more comfortably for yourself is to mention this to the client somewhere as you need this kind of time to tell the client when you speak when you're sharing i am fully present to what you're sharing so i may need a little bit of time few seconds to process before i ask my next question is that okay with you so when we don't know we take permission from the client and then the client also would feel great deal of respect they would feel oh my coach really wants to listen to me Nowadays, most of the time, people just hear people out just to provide an answer rather than to truly understand. So when you create that space for your client, the client already builds rapport with you immediately with that kind of probing. What do you think about something like that, Mijo? No, that sounds that sounds great to me, Fernando. Uh, I have done it in one of the coaching sessions uh, previously uh, as an experiment. Uh, and... Uh, it say it worked well for me uh, but yeah, uh, yeah i need to become more comfortable in doing this with clients and good to hear from you that this is something that you think is is a good practice excellent ritual you are very aware of what is happening uh, in your coaching practice great now the last um, um, developmental opportunity that i see here is that towards the end when the client was uh, completing the session we clearly saw an energy shift the client was uh, showing us the energy that uh, he was gaining what he was looking for during this conversation so now what i would like to check in with you is that uh, how do you think about the reassurance to the client of the achievement of the goal towards the end of the session. Mm, what do you mean by reassurance here? Uh, so the client set a goal at the beginning and then we, uh, what one of the things that we could do as a coach is to check in with what happened to that goal at the end and receiving feedback. Uh, what do you think, uh, what opportunities do you think maybe further to what happened during the session? Yeah, so like I said that uh, since we did not, we, we identified a very black and white kind of a goal, uh, but the outcome was not that black and white. It was more in between. So that is something that uh, I should have reassured with the client that this is what you previously decided and this is what uh, we have initially uh, like we have deviated a little bit without deviating too much and this is what uh, 
we have finally concluded on uh, there was also an opportunity in between the session where i can just check in that are we making progress towards uh, uh, the goal that we started the discussion on so uh, an in between check in during the session uh, is also something that gives uh, client the time to reflect that uh, is he or she really adding value during the session so that is an that is a opportunity i i agree i accept that Brilliant, Rajul. So we are creating a lot of development for yourself, and I hope that you will uh, be mindful of incorporating some of these um, co-creation that uh, we are together uh, bringing to table. Right. So now, uh, since we are also looking at the ICF. Uh, core competencies i'm going to share with you the minimum skill requirements we are not going to necessarily look at each and every competency because we don't have the time but let us look at about four or five of them very randomly at the moment i don't even know what it is so please allow me to share my screen with you um, and i have the competencies over here now coaches if you are wondering where i got these competencies these are from icf website directly from the icf website and you can find them here uh under the icf um education page where you can find the pcc markers and then you can find current markers and updated markers over here so today we will be focusing on these markers that we can see under the current markers so let's look at couple of them i'm going to actually focus on the goal setting part which is quite important um so the disqualifiers now one of the things coaches we need to remember when we are creating a coaching recording is that this is not necessarily need to be a real commercial coaching session with our clients because uh, you understand as you gain experience uh, we cannot follow the icf uh, competency framework for each and every coaching conversation especially if you are working with clients at mcc level we can't just really follow it as a checklist uh, but if you are really uh, a proficient with coaching skills demonstrating this shouldn't be actually a problem because you're proficient you can mindfully demonstrate these uh, skills uh, so what i would recommend you to think about is uh, uh, think about recording this session as a demonstration rather than thinking about it as an actual commercial <coughs> business coaching session uh, in 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 your day-to-day uh, -day coaching practice um, and then often coaches ask me is there a specific time that we must have for 40 minutes 45 30 minutes there's really no such thing as a time frame between 20 minutes to uh, the 1 hour that's the duration of the session um i would say usually within about good 45 minutes we are able to create a good coaching session however there's no time limitation apart from it being between 20 to 60 minutes take it easy another question i often get asked is uh, do we need to include at the beginning taking permission to record the session and then sharing the definition of coaching mentioning that the coaching agreement had been signed up and things like that absolutely not necessary all my three credentials i did not mention that at all in anywhere uh, in the coaching recording and it has never been a problem so keep that in mind and then let's look at these two disqualifiers the coach exhibits uh, the, any breach of uh, code of ethics we did not see in this session so this is uh, something that um, that will become visible in the coaching session if you um, included which shouldn't happen and then the next d2 is actually making sure that you are practicing coaching with icf definition of coaching now i believe today um Ridul had the opportunity where the coachy himself was asking the advice and how Ridul uh, stepped into that space and kind of passing the ball back to the client or holding the mirror was well done. And now here it's not just a disqualifier; it's not about a disqualifier, but here Ridul has demonstrated that actually he is very aware of the ICF definition of coaching. Right, so now let's look at the goal setting part a little bit, coaches. So, Mridul invited the client to explore and he asked that question as a very serious question, inviting the client uh, to explore. And so, definitely, there was a clear indication of in, 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 helping the client to identify and reconfirm as he uh, clearly specified even. So, in both options, you're planning to bring new people in, something like that. And then 2.2, coach helped the client to identify the uh, measure of success here it was very clear 
there were two clear options and the client is looking at clarity. So the goal was set uh, in these two aspects very clearly. And then if you move on to the next one, uh, for ACC markers, asking the client why, why is this important or the relevance is absolutely important, which Mridul did. So at the ACC level, he actually receives a, parking, a passing score. However, for the PCC and MCC, it is important that you truly ask the client or inquire the client, why is it meaningful for the client um, to explore that particular goal? So some of the ways that you could do this, uh, as the client explores a little bit what the goal is, you can say, why is it important? And when the client has shared with you why it is important, now you can bring in the meaningful question. The reason we bring in the meaningful question is from the very beginning of the coaching session, we create an awareness to the client who is the person coming into this coaching session? It's not about what is the client discussing. It's about who is coming to the coaching session. How does this person develop? And how does this, what with what development does this individual leave this coaching session? So when we talk about that, asking about the meaning, purpose, um, value for the client at the very beginning to dis uh, why that discussion is important or meaningful is very important. So coaches who are recording for PCC, MCC, remember to ask both questions. Here is one of the way I do that. I usually tell the client after client explored why it is important. I say, great, thank you for sharing with me why it is important. Now let's lay everything in front of you why it is important to you and provide aerial vision to it from above. Why is that meaningful for you to address this today? What is the purpose behind that you would like to address this? What value do you want to create by addressing that importance today? So find a creative way to bring in both questions and you may notice that client immediately elevate their awareness of who they are, what they would like to develop within themselves. So for an example, all right, and then Mridul clearly completed 2.5 by inviting the client to explore what the client would like to be, uh, what the client believes they want to discuss. And then uh, the coach continues the conversation in the direction the client desired. Now Mridul did this well for the ACC um, markers. At the same time, if you are working at the PCC or a MCC level, uh, especially for the PCC recording, it is mandatory. Somewhere in the middle of the coaching session, you check in with the client how the value is created in the direction client wants to move forward. So for an example, how do you demonstrate 2.5 specifically to show the assessors that you are well aware of this competency? The way you could do this is say, so we began this conversation with this goal in mind, very briefly. And at the moment you are exploring this, please allow me to inquire, how are we creating value in the direction that you would like to move forward? Can you ask the question, how are we achieving the goal? We can't. The reason is that then we are binding the client down to the goal. Instead, we ask about the direction. So this is very important purchase. And also another thing is, if you feel the value, uh, sorry, if the client is changing the direction of the coaching session compared to the, uh, co compared to the goal that was set at the very beginning, it is important that you quickly check in with the client as soon as possible. Right. So for ACC, this goal setting session is quite um, uh, satisfactory, but for PCC and MCC, it would not be adequate. We do. There's nothing to worry about that because you at the moment only have very few coaching uh, our experience. Right. So continuing, let's look at um, this uh, C C3, creating trust and intimacy. So this is quite clearly uh, demonstrated let us look at just 3.3 coach encourages and allows the client to fully express himself now this was demonstrated very well Mijul asked several times what else mm -hmm. like that right so there were very clear indications that Mijul is listening very well and encouraging the client to um, express more now coaches even energetically at PCC and MCC level, we look at this even energetically. What do I mean by that? A client is explaining something to the coach and the coach goes like, mm-hmm, 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 right? The client, a coach acknowledges and shows that the coach is listening. But do you see what happens energetically there? The client coach is almost like conveying, 
I know, I know, what's next, get to it kind of energy, right? But what if the coach said something like this? Ah, ah, when the client is sharing something, you show your full support to the client and encourage the client to fully express. So not only just by sharing words at PCC and MCC level, you also can use your energy to help the client to explore more, right? That is what we talk about. Like when we say, tell me more or what else, that is minimum skill requirement. But how do we use our energy to invite the client to express, express more? So that is one small point I'd like to point out. So let's look at another competency now. Now coach notices and explores energy shifts in the client. Now Mridul told us that he actually thinks that he can improve this a little bit. Mridul, here's an example that I could show you where you could have done that. Do you remember at the beginning when you said both options include bringing people bringing people in then? Mridul, that was spot, spot on. I thought that was a great uh, point that you, may, uh, you, you brought out and then pointed out to the client. At the time, did you see Venkat's face? He had this moment of little breakthrough as you said that, ah, that, that moment. So that was an opportunity for you to ask, ah, I saw that your energy shifted a little bit. What was that smile about? So that was an opportunity for you to use energy for an example when the client changes. Another opportunity, I, I would say 4.3, towards the end of the conversation, uh, he was saying, be a firm, right? He was saying, be firm, be firm. As he was saying that several times, there was the energy was different compared to what he was saying at the very beginning, right? So now that was another opportunity for you to say, Venkat, I noticed some different energy as you say the word firm. What does that energy trying to communicate here to us? Something like that, right? So that's another competency uh, I would like to point out. Let's look at another one. Now, coach partners with the clients by playing back the client's express possibilities for the client to choose from. Now, Midul did this so well, he, I think, even went beyond what is necessary, Midul. So great, and it was very clearly demonstrated. Um, now, coach inquires about uh, explores clients' use of language. I remember uh, that you were using some of the words specifically the client was using. So fantastic job, um, uh, Mridul, in using client's language. Well done with that. Several times you brought up. Um, now this one, 5.7. When appropriate, coach is quiet and gives client time to think. Now these are PCC markers. Now Mridul, this is something and as SMA may say, did not, was not represented in your coaching session, for an example. This is deliberately allowing the client to crunch their brain. At the very beginning of the coaching session, there's a great opportunity for all of us to demonstrate that, which is when the client has shared with the goal with you, you repeat back the goal to the client and you say, so this is what I heard as the goal for the session today. Did I hear you correctly, right? Did I get it correctly? Client confirms. And then you could ask the client, so where would you like to start today? Where do we begin this exploration today? It's a difficult question, very difficult question for the client. Now the client is going to need some time there to crunch their brain. And this is a place assessors are usually listening carefully to see whether uh, that uh, the coach allows space for the client. Uh, so. I think coaches, most of the time, when we talk about allowing space for the client, it is it begins from not during the coaching session. I don't think it begins in the coaching session. It begins even before you come to the coaching session. In other words, you making an intention. You making an intention to show up in the coaching session. So let's keep it in mind. Now, let me ask you this little question. I'm opening this question to all of you. Now, when we talk about, let's say we have a uh, wise man and an older, uh, sorry, younger child, a wise man and an older, uh, younger child sitting with each other. They are in a space of learning. Now, if the wise man is the one educating the child, who is the coach here? Anyone, this question is open to anyone. Yeah. 
Yeah, the child. The child. Why is that? Because the uh, child is more curious than the wise man. Child is more and curious. The child is. Uh, the child is asking open-ended questions about. uh you know what the topic is all about what you know the child is child is seeking answers from the older man and the older man is the one who's then going by the exploration based on the child's questions absolutely thank you coaches for sharing so in other words the child looks up to the wise man right the child looks up to the wise man because the child believes the wise person the wise man has all the answers does that sound familiar the coach believes all the answers are in the client right so remember that when you step into the coaching sessions so show up to listen to the client rather than to do so mitu uh, my from my personal perspective this is an area that you can improve uh, when you are trusting the client i think it also bottoms down to trusting the client more what i mean by that is often when you often when you repeated back a summary to the client there was a lot of substance in it there was a lot of flesh in what you were sharing the reason is of course you explained you were buying sometimes so of course it's normal but at the same time if you look at it when the client has expressed their thoughts if you just use the keywords you said a b c just simple so proactive there partnership here getting more people in that's what you share that is more than enough you don't have to come up with full sentences so when you do this you allow the client to reflect back on what they have shared as well so let's look at two more uh, different things right um yeah so coach shares observations intuitions comments thoughts and feelings to serve the client's learning uh, or forward movement i think uh, mridul you did this very well throughout the coaching session uh, well done and also now this requires uh, some level of uh, vulnerability as well now one of the points i would like to point out which is quite related it's not directly this competency but quite related to this competency is at some point you said mridul um it seems that after you let them go and then you continue this discussion and then when coachy stepped into the uh stepped into answer coachy said i would not say that right now what did you do you allowed the client to be in the space and not to take it personally or not to prove a point right so ability to accept as what it is Uh, so i believe when you are able to have that mindset whatever the client says i'm willing to accept regardless of how i perceived it when you come into that space the vulnerability is already created so you are able to provide observations intuitions comments and thoughts and another thing that i also find often that there is this very strong paradox for coaches who begin their coaching journey with icf which is Uh, that we don't advise our clients we don't provide solutions absolutely accurate we don't do that right because if we provided we co-create clients actions which we don't want to do in that magnitude but it is important that we provide feedback now often some coaches mix up providing advice and providing feedback now when you provide feedback what we do is sharing our own intuition our own observation our own thought or the feeling so you clearly point it out to the client this is only what i would like to share with you from my perspective correct me if i'm wrong so kind of uh first sharing that with the client and taking the permission and showing humility and then sharing that feedback could create value for the client and then with your coaching presence you also have shown the client already i am willing to accept the answer as it is regardless of confirming to my own thoughts so i think this would help us um to keep in mind these few key pointers let us look at one last uh, uh from the last bit right Right now, let's look at this last one. Uh, coach partners with the client to close the session. Now, when we close the session, coaches, uh, 
at every level i mean i think for acc level if you ask like midul ask at the end uh, what would you like to what would you do differently in the future some similar question like that right so that's a important question like how did the client develop at the end of this coaching session now usually you could ask three main questions specifically for icf recording at the end of the coaching session very simply you could directly ask the client what did you learn about the situation or what did you discover about the situation what did you discover about yourself or your how have you developed through this conversation if there was a emotional context then you can ask how have you emotionally developed this uh, through this conversation or if the client was talking about spiritual development how have you developed spiritually through this conversation so that's the second important question and the third one you could ask how would you use this new knowledge you created new awareness you created in the future in different situations maybe so by asking that question you actually create the ability for the client to close the session right so when you do it in this order you help the client close the session and then you could literally ask the client to close the session by asking something like so um if you were to add anything at this point of time as we are ending this conversation what would that be so you see coaches what you do is you are literally using words from the uh, minimum skill requirements and you very clearly point it out to the assessors that you are actually being very mindful of the competencies and minimum skill requirements so that you create more um reassurance for the assessor to be able to provide you or create you, uh, to assess you recording more efficiently rather than when you operate uh, in a very open space with a robust set of coaching skills uh, where the uh, the the assessor has to dig deep to find out uh, where the competencies are hidden so keep in mind think about it as a more of a demonstration that you're following these skills Uh, so do do not approach it in a way i'm going to include it in my way let the assessor find it himself or herself try not to approach it like that rather rather than that think about uh, helping the assessor to find where the competencies are already in the coaching session so that the assessor can also very clearly give you a um assess a, a passing score why is that coaches now do you know the process when you apply for the uh, icf credential usually each coaching recording is assessed by two uh, assessors right uh, either you on the similar coaching um, credential level or a high level credential now it's natural the assessor think about themselves safeguarding themselves thinking how would the other person also would assess right it's a natural thought anyone would have so they would be very cautious when they are marking so if they did not hear the mark properly the tendency is that they wouldn't want to take a chance and provide um the the correct uh, grade for that um coaching recording right so this is of course a brief conversation today uh of a uh, sea of how uh, minimum skill requirements that uh, is available to us um as coaches when we apply for our credentials so i have been speaking a lot which is not usually my quality uh now i would like to open uh, to all of you if you have a few questions and any insights if you would like to share let's hear three of you Actually, why don't we start with Midul? Midul, anything to add with the feedback that we have provided to you? Um, any justification that you can make? No, no, I'm I'm truly thankful for such a detailed feedback from you, Fernando. So, uh, I I think uh, I have I have definitely added value for myself <laughs> by being here today uh, by receiving this feedback. So, thank you for uh, the detailed. summary and all going through all the markers and I'll, i'll let the other folks come in and speak what they have felt thank you mrito i'd like to thank fernando uh, i think it was a very good uh, detailed uh, session about what's to be done acc pcc mcc uh, i got a few pointers about some markers and uh, really very grateful to you for holding this session today thank you so much fernando 
Thank you, Anurag. We are happy to have you here. Let's hear from one more coach. Fernando, can I say something? Sorry, yes. I have to play a bit more because I'm now driving. Uh, thank you very much for that session. Thank you, and me. Your name is Amit Hanfi. Thank you for the coaching session. It was really useful and to be quite happy. I've been having quite a few lessons. And Fernando, for your capture on the competencies. I have one question to ask in regards to something we have to do. When he, when he was capturing the action he needed to take, he asked, should I do this? Is that something that we should encourage or should we send it back to the coach or the client? Like, should I cross the road? I would ask, should you? What does, what does your gut tell you? Uh, but I, uh, I don't know what the... I know this is one of those where maybe there's no right or wrong answer, but what would perhaps be the more comfortable approach? Maggie, may I ask you to uh, repeat your question? I'm not sure if I got it fully. Uh, your audio okay. is a little bit disturbed, okay. yeah. Sorry. So there's a, there's a part where... Peter uh, Duck. The name Peter Duck. He asked... Uh, he, there was action he wanted to take and he asked, should I do this? It was at the very end. And the action that he needed to take. And he asked, should I do this? At that point, should the coach help the person make the decision or should we send back the responsibility and the decision making to the client? Ah, okay, great question, Maggie. I think uh, some of the answer is also in your question itself. So how I understand is that when the actions were setting at some point, the client asked the coach, what do you think? Should I do that? Right. So there was that. Uh, now, what can the coach do there? I think what Ridul did was great. Um, he said, go ahead. He was supporting the client. There, so absolutely no right or wrong way of doing that. How Ridul handled it well, uh, did well. And also considering that he's a very new coach, um, it, it's very understandable what he did there. Now, I can't necessarily say what should be done there, but I could say what I may have done differently over there. So I would say now we are having, so this is a little bit of feedback to the client. I would say, so we are having this conversation in order to create a solid outcome during this conversation. Now you are proposing a solution and you are still asking, should I? What is that happening there? So I wouldn't necessarily ask about, I'll ask about the behavior of the client. I am not interested in that, right? When you go in the higher level, you are not interested in whether should the client do it or not. It's not important. What is important is what is happening in the client in that situation. So in other words, we are trying to really dig deep and try to find out what is that uncertainty there. Right? So that is what I may have done. I wouldn't have used the word uncertainty because then I'm introducing a new word that was not existing in that situation. I would simply say something like, uh, I thought we are in this conversation to create solid outcomes. Although you are proposing this uh, action, there is a should happening there. What is in there? Right? I wouldn't even ask what is underneath of that. What is that you are not sure about? No, just directly ask what is about there? What is in there? What is around there? very open so now we help the client to go deep and identify what might that be that is more valuable to the client than making a decision should or should not great great question mary i i appreciate that you asked yeah okay uh, thank you so much coaches uh, since we have limited time i think we come to an end of this conversation today uh, and ridul i would like to thank you uh, deeply for taking uh, the center stage uh, although you are uh, quite new to the coaching world and I would say you did a great job uh, especially remembering the entire process it is not an easy job to remember the entire ICF process so remembering that penetrating to, through that well is uh, commendable and I would also say that the only marker visibly that was missing was accountability other than that you actually touch base on all the markers for ACC I would say there's also a possibility that you may even pass uh, the uh, uh, ACC uh, with this recording even depending on the assessor but of course would I recommend you to submit I will not 
uh, we need to be sure so su- super sure that this will definitely get a uh, passing score before we submit so please do not submit this recording i really like how you uh, what i really liked about the session is uh, your presence and how you gave yourself to the client fully we could see your genuine interest to create value there there was no redoul anymore there you were fully fully present in that conversation and you intentionally joined that conversation so well done redoul thank you for giving us an opportunity to learn and develop and you actually have created immense value uh, in uh, learning and also venkat i would also like to thank you and coming to this space and sharing your thoughts is extremely valuable uh, thank you once again and also we wish you all the best in this uh, project that you are creating and we hope that the people will uh, comply to what is necessary and provide the right leadership. Venkat, would you like to add anything before we say goodbye today? I know thank you so much for this opportunity and great to see all of you guys. Thank you. Wonderful. Thank you Venkat. Then I would like to thank all of you coaches. Uh thank you for joining us today. I am thinking maybe we can continue this once a month. I will keep you posted and sending all of you love and light and wish you a wonderful week ahead and wish you all the very best with your ICF credential journey and let's co-create and collaborate in the future. Bye for now. Thank you. Thank you for now. Bye. Bye. Bye.